What's up and welcome back to the channel. Today's conversation wasn't supposed to be an episode. Peter Saddington is a tech entrepreneur, multi-startup founder, and venture capitalist. What started as a simple chat about this podcast somehow morphed into a deep dive conversation about the importance of men. It wasn't planned, but I felt compelled to upload. As always, if you make it to the end, feel free to share. We can't grow without your support. I appreciate you always. And now, here's a look inside my brain. So, I feel like since we are rolling, I think it's an opportunity because you're probably not going to get as many questions. Mm -hmm. And I'm a good interviewer. Okay. So I'm going to start asking you some questions. Okay. So Matt, you've just set up this amazing studio. I got in here probably about 30 minutes ago, and I was, I was shell shocked in a great way. And the reason is, is and as I as I told you when we were outside during the break, the reason is is because I just wanted to see you execute this. Yeah. And for me, that was it was so exciting to see this actually executed upon live working as as you said just a couple of minutes ago it's a full setup yeah and so now that you're here in with this full setup in this office tell me just greenfields where where could this go so when i first put this together i didn't really have a direction i just knew i wanted to do something mm. but as far as what i wanted the content to be i wasn't sure it was more of one of those you build it and it'll come. Mm -hmm. And through various conversations in the past and as we've built up to us speaking today, I've come to realize that I like to hear people's human experience. Mm -hmm. I want to hear what drives you, what makes you who you are, what experiences in your past um, have formed you to become who you are. And I think as I learn through conversations with you, other people can learn. I think the most important thing is that people need to be able to think for themselves. Mm -hmm. And in order to think from yourselves, think for yourself, you need to be able to learn in non-traditional ways. I'm so sick of watching people learn via what they're told. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah. a lack of self-learning these days. It's it's like they're just regurgitating the the common vernacular the common nomenclature the common sayings of the day and there is real no kind of no originality to the thought process here and with the um growing uh, with ai taking over the world oh bro fuck crazy fuck dude and shit the is internet crazy. taking over the world and our next generation literally growing up online social awkwardness the inability to connect to people in real life. I think men need to come back out and start telling their stories again. It was an art for the longest time where people would tell stories. You'd sit around at night, you tell stories about your life, about things that maybe happened 15 or 20 or 30 years ago. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And through those stories, the next generation learned. Mm -hmm. Those stories became a part of who they are, even though they didn't live them. Mm -hmm. But now we rely on these stories that are manufactured. What happened to living real life and telling the next generation? And there really is, there really, it, I don't think there can be too much saturation of the human stories and the human experience. And I think you're a great conduit for that because as long as I've known you, you are even keeled, you have an even ego, you're willing to learn like this one i just have to talk about this like you just a couple minutes ago you, you talked about how you didn't have a particular vision for this you just know knew that you needed to do it and you wanted to create a medium and space for people to tell their stories Correct. and you want to be the megaphone for their stories out to the world what i know about you is i i can appreciate the maturity of that thought process while most people will be like, why would, you, why would you fucking do this when you have no purpose or goal? Eh, that is a very amateurish way sometimes to look at things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, and I think this is a great ex example of this, sometimes the most mature thing to do is not to have a plan, interestingly enough, because you know what it can be, mm -hmm. what the potentials are, but you're also mature enough and seasoned enough as an operator and entrepreneur 
that you know that there's a multiplicity of ways that this can go, and the best way for you to position yourself is to be open to all of them. Correct. Because sometimes we constrain ourselves like, this is the way that I need to do it. It's like, well, maybe not. Maybe that's the broken way. Maybe that's the web 2.0 way. And now we're in a web 3 world. Look, I, you just brought up, I'm just going to go from one thing to another because I have to bring this up. Like, I spent five hours in chat GPT Oof. talking to this fucking thing. Here's my notes. Yeah. Let me just go through my notes real quick. I won't expound on them, but these are the 10 things. This is a video that I want to make. And actually, we should probably do it on here but I'll just introduce it here. There's a 10 things that I learned from talking with ChatGPT for five hours. Number one, ChatGPT is now going to replace competence. Mm. My kids should never fucking write an essay ever again. Nope. You can ask Chat, tell me about the war of 1722. ChatGPT, and these are all experiments I ran. Tell me about the war of this date. I want it to be in a conservative tone. It has to be 1,800 words on the dot. It has to include five references from other books. And you can create all these parameters, mm -hmm. and it'll write the most sophisticated essay. Mm -hmm. Original content, number one, competence is gone. Like, you don't, you don't have to have competence anymore. Number two, memorization versus critical thinking. Memorization is worthless. We already knew this from school. But critical thinking, I think, is going to become even more important now because why memorize anything when you have, obviously, Google? But with chat, GBT, and AI, you it even supersedes any need for you to memorize because chat, the AI can tell you the entire story and the narrative and explanation, mm. the rationale and the reasons and why something happens. Number, number three, real creation. I asked chat, GBT to write code for me in mm. HTML, Ruby, JavaScript, and Perl. And it wrote whatever I wanted. I said, write, create for me a form with these type of parameters. I want this type of drawing and I want you to output in a, in a, in a Adobe Photoshop file. It did it for me. Mm -hmm. Then I started moving into number four, calculate for me, problem solving. I started calculating all sorts of random things like what happens if I do X and Y and what's the probability of Z? And then I started going to digital currencies and that just like real creation of problem solving. Number five, how to anything, AI can teach me anything. Number six, it moved me into exploits. I started dropping code into chat GBT, Matt, and I asked it, find exploits. Mm -hmm. I can now hack things and it can code with me. Bro, it's crazy. Loss of jobs, that's obvious. Layer one versus layer two, this is an abstraction. Like who's going to own all this data? That's an issue for me. Number nine, are we in, we are past the information age. We're in the knowledge age now because AI is going to give us all the knowledge. And last but not least, number 10, and I'll just leave it here, is it is fucking impossible for me to imagine how this AI is going to evolve in the next couple of years. Because five hours talking to this thing, I forgot I was talking to a computer. And that, I think, is the scary thing. I mean, I had this conversation with Haas while he was here, and my take was that I find it extremely concerning. Dude, because you don't know who's real anymore. No, <laughs> that's the competence. I could I could ask someone online a question. They could be dumb as fuck, but they could take my question, put it into AI, and give me one of the most sophisticated answers mm -hmm. back, and I would not know their real competence. No, I would not know their real knowledge level, skill base, aptitude. I wouldn't know any of that. Nothing. Then that what are we? What are we left with? See and. That's why people who have original ideas will become winners. <laughs> That's the critical thinking thing. Because the chat GBT can regurgitate what everyone has input over time, mm. but it can't create an original idea. Right. That's where they lack. Yeah. Right. So how do you put in a certain level of emotion that a computer cannot understand? That's something that may not be able to be done. But on a generic level in interactions with regular people, on 99% of the people you interact with on a daily basis, it's more than good enough. More than sufficient. Correct. When I gave you really shallow examples, I went fucking deep, Matt. Mm -hmm. I, I, the parameters I gave it, like, talk to, write this code or write this, this you know, problem within these parameters. 
only use a conservative voice mm -hmm. or use a liberal voice or or on, only make sure that you quote these types of you know these types of uh, worldviews and it will you know it's not it's not like it's an amalgamator right mm -hmm. it just takes all of the the body of knowledge of the world and it's able to in, not into it but into inject tone so the what's, tone is the thing that fucks me bro so what's more fun is if you ask it to do it in the voice of Eminem <laughs> right, right, which right. is something I've done. I've had it do um, very complex or uh, thought exercises, mm. but I want it to regurgitate the information to me in the voice of Eminem. And it does, which is just, I know, <laughs> mind blowing. And imagine if you get to a point with this podcast where you become so noteworthy that someone pings you someday and is like, hey, dude, I didn't know you were talking about this. Mm. And it's just because they have all your voice did. And now it's Correct. like, Say, please write me this thing or solve this problem or tell me this thing in Matt Kim's voice. Mm -hmm. It's like, I mean, it's a little choppy, but dude, in it's a couple of years, enough. it's going to get so much. I mean, I mean, you can see the potential. Oh, it's nuts, dude. So this, this AI stuff is, is, is something that I want to dive into deep this year as an investor and venture capitalist. But at the same level, I want to explore it with mm. other people. Um, and I don't actually mind sharing ideas on your podcast here, like, one of the things, and I think we can work, maybe even work on this together if you're interested, is right now AI and gener AI generated content is still in its super early days, super nascent. Not a whole lot of people are doing it. So therefore, if we started creating news that was generated by AI mm. and just posting it daily, I mean now till a couple months, not a whole lot, but consider. The long tail, as you will all understand. Imagine the point in time in the future when someone goes to this website and they don't realize that it's AI generated based off of prompts that that we've set. We uh, we write us an art original article about the recent events of Trump doing X and include these types of ideas in, as well. And I want the final bullet point to be that Trump is bad. It'll write that mm -hmm. whole original article with all the context, with tone, and no one would ever know that it was just two knuckleheads who wrote a couple of command line stuff, and the entire fifteen, you know, fifteen hundred word article was just generated. You know, see, so I like sit, why the, why not? I understand that. I sit on the complete opposite side of it. Okay, so I think there's going to be a lot of people that are doing that. In yes, the future, 100%. Um, there's already a lot of YouTube channels that basically do that, which is they take AI generated content that's where and I got they my put it on. From, yeah. mm -hmm. And that's becoming a very big niche for some people to generate income on, on YouTube. I want to be the complete opposite. I want to human generate content. Analog. Analog. Yeah. OG because shit. OG shit. Because in the long run, as more and more people go into this digital economy, oh. as more and more people embrace AI, everyone's doing it. And you know what? They're not going to be able to differentiate themselves. The differentiators are the ones that are going to do it manually. Yes. And you will end up in most, I can see you being end up, end up becoming part of a, a essentially a, a cohort of lonely islanders mm -hmm. because everyone else is using augmented fill in the blank. Correct. And, and when people they, who do it digitally can also be canceled that easily. Mm -hmm. If you do it, all they got to do is just turn off your machine and you're done. If you're someone that does it with your own thought, mm -hmm. you can't turn you off. Yeah. You can't kill your ideas. Mm -hmm. But they can kill your bot. They can kill your AI. They can kill your code. Mm -hmm. Very easy to be done. But they can't shut you off. So I go opposite. I go completely opposite to that. I, I get it. I love the perspective. Mm -hmm. I I, th I think in a, sh a shallow way. And my way is the slower way. My way is um, the less lucrative way. I understand that completely. Yeah. If I said my goal is to monetize as much as possible, write the script, have AI do it, that put it on cruise control, and go go just go into the matrix. Yeah. Boom. Done. No problem. That was the... That was my calculus mm -hmm. for this idea mm -hmm. is that the time to potential value mm -hmm. ratio is very small. Correct. Like, right. But what you're talking about analog, which you, mm -hmm. you, you know me, I'm totally about. That's the 
more work. Correct. But man, the longevity of that mm -hmm. is far superior because anybody can write in a prompt and generate text. And generate I think shit. what we've learned through last year and the Andrew Tate saga <laughs> is that you can't kill an idea. You can't. You can't kill that they guy. They canceled him. You can't get rid of they him. They arrested him. They did everything they could to him, whether you agree with him or not. That's secondary to this conversation. They and threw, it's all alleged, by the way. Like They threw everything at him. Mm, mm, but mm. he's an idea. And you can't kill that. Man, that's so like Spartan. It is. It is crazy. But I think he proved that you can't actually win against the machine. Because that's what he's doing. You're right. Whether how the story ends is not... The, it's not the story here. The story is he did it. Yeah. It actually doesn't even matter. He's at, it actually, his, his model is greater than him now. Correct. And them canceling him, them possibly jailing him or killing him. Would only make it better. Would just make him a bigger martyr. Yeah. It's the martyr syndrome, right? Don't, you don't, you don't kill the prophet. Exactly. <laughs> and he somehow became that guy. And it's a really weird way. Because so many men relate to him, and you may not agree with everything he says, because some shit he says is just way out there. It's for it's for emotional impact. Of for course. Sure. And I get why. Reaction impact. You know, and it's a method. Some people are shock people. Mm, shock. Some people are logic people. He does a combination of both. Uh, but the biggest part is they couldn't cancel him. Because he's an idea. And he did it manually. He did. Yeah. He just went out there and just wouldn't shut the fuck up. He just kept on talking and talking and talking and didn't matter what they told him he can and cannot say. He just kept on talking and talking and talking. And do you know what? His words are still heard by billions of people in the world. Everybody on a daily knows basis. about I, And I think, I think he, I remember hearing him one time say, I am the most Googled or I am the most well-known. Mm -hmm. And I was incredulous when he said that, but I actually Googled it. And he wasn't wrong. Yeah. Like he's up there. <laughs> like people know him as much as they know Bill Gates in a weird, funky way. Yeah. Um, I mean, he speaks in hyperbole and mm -hmm. that's just his mm -hmm. way of communication. I get it. We're not children. We can distinguish between bullshit and not. Yeah. Right. I, I think, I think, and I'm, as you were talking, I was searching kind of my mind and thinking about what he's achieved. And I think you're absolutely right. I was trying to validate it in my own head here. I think you're absolutely right that he is truly the first individual who was not cancelable. Because I'm thinking about other influencers of the, you know the last mm -hmm. decade and the the rise, and then they got cancelled. And then they when they got cancelled, they they literally effectively just stopped. They or, just died on the vine, or they pivoted, but they just don't have the power influence that they have now. Or their message, or they kissed the ring, or they kissed the ring. They gave in, right? They sold out to the man. And I was really searching my brain here, Matt. Nobody, nobody. I think Andrew Tate literally is the first model of someone who who transcended the cancellation. And I think that's why they hate him. <laughs> that's why they're throwing the whole book at him, right? Yeah, because, they're trying to jail him now, right? Because he showed that if you stand up. For what you believe, whether again, doesn't matter if you agree or not. So I'm gonna I'm cut, cut you off there. What does he believe, in your estimation? He believes that men should be men. That there Tell is an old school mean? value man, and that it means something to have values, to have conviction, mm. to not sway with the wind. And I think that's his biggest message. I stop. Complaining, stop bitching, stop being throw a bitch. the fuck up. Yeah. Put on some pants and do some man shit. Mm. I think that's his message. And that's what they don't like. Because he's telling an entire generation of young men to stop believing what you're told. And why let me play devil's advocate. Why is the system raging against that message? Control. Mm. It's weak weak men are easy to control. Weak men are easy to control. Mm, those beta ass males. Correct. You want people to be compliant. I'm trying. I'm trying to ex think of because I, I especially I, war age men. You want them to be compliant because if the war aged men band together and say this is bullshit, we're not going to take this anymore. It can be really bad for society. Mm. It's easier for them to be complacent. Than it is to have them agitated, because they're the only ones that actually can make a difference. 
That's true. We're old men. We can't make a difference in the world anymore. <laughs> we can't. We're not going to fight, right? You're, you're a big guy. You're in good shape, but let's be real. You're not going to war What's for What's the anybody. age cutoff? We're both in our 40s, right? Is that, is that the age cutoff? <laughs> no. I, I think that, you know, like if you're a 20 to 32 year old man, like you are 20, the man 32, yeah. that has the ability to change the course of the world. Okay. So thir- in, in Matt's Kim's, Matt Kim's eyes, 32 is pretty, I, I kind of agree with you, man. Kind of 32, 33, 34 is kind of the cutoff. Yeah. Because at 35, you got fucking responsibilities. You got responsibilities. You got bills you got to pay. Bills. You, you got, got family, family yeah. et cetera. But at 20 to 30, say 35, if mm. you push it out, 20 to mm-hmm. 35, mm-hmm. you have literally no responsibility but yourself. Mm-hmm. It's just pure survival. And if you ever want to take a chance and say, fuck this, I'm going to do it my way, that's when you do it. Yeah. Because We're too late in life for that. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> you know, all we can do is talk and hope to uh, convince the next generation to stop. You and know. inspire the next generation to grow. Exactly. Up there, right? that, that's all we have. I'm trying to think about Andrew Tate's principle. Like, mm. is it is it is it very Jordan Peterson-esque in that? Because if I could summarize Jordan Peterson, it, it would simply be personal responsibility. Mm-hmm. And if it, I don't know if I, I'm not speaking for Andrew Tate, but I would think that he is also pretty much that same core principle, but he takes it and communicates it from a very different angle. Correct. I think he's just more um, in your face. Mm. Um, whereas Jordan Peterson, he makes a lot of logic sense. Listening to him talk for a while, you also feel kind of stupid. Because he's, he's very well educated, mm. he uses big words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He speaks in uh, parables, and he extrapolates it out of for a long form. Sometimes it's hard to track with it. Yeah, you get lost in the middle of it. Andrew Tate dumbs it down for people. <laughs> so your average guy who's right. twenty years old be like, okay, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get that. You know, so he does a good job of making it consumable for his audience. And so. Let's let's ex- let's extrapolate at the meta level then. So if we have men like Jordan Peterson and we have men like Andrew Tate helping the younger generation grow a pair, become personally responsible, fucking do something with their lives, the outcome of this is better society? Is that the is that the assertion here? It may be something as basic as survival of society. Ooh. You stop having men do men shit, eventually society breaks down. So like, fuck the whole like. Let's try to be successful. Let's just try to survive. survive. Let's make it a hundred years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you're not wrong, man. You know, the, I mean, if every man in this day and age was woe is me, mm. you know, um, I've been taken advantage of, and I'm really sad, and I'm depressed. The world is against me. The world is against me. Blah mm. blah blah. And if you're that guy, and we have a whole generation of those guys. Where the fuck do we go? Well, nothing's getting done. Nothing's getting done. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, we're in an inverse curve where shit's going bad. Mm. And you can't, it's too late. Mm. Only thing you can do is influence the next generation to be men. Because you need men to be men for the world to go around. Not saying women don't provide value. Of course they do. Mm-hmm. But in a very different way. For sure. And you for need sure. men out there that are men. Well, we have, yeah. I think we also have to be intellectually honest at some level. In that man built this world. And it, in, in that might be a cancelable offense in this paper hand world that we live in with all these people that are just constantly offended by everything that mm-hmm. other people say. But if we're truly intellectually honest, just sit there with in, true intellectual honesty for a second. Like, no woman that I know, and I don't think I'm going Andrew Tate here, but no woman I know is going to be sweating building shit like this they don't want to and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with it it's just we're motivated differently Mm -hmm. you know what was it men men are more into the objects and women are more into the relationships men are more willing to do jobs they fucking hate (laughs) for the greater good (laughs) say less and that's fine you know but it's the men that are going out there and doing jobs they hate for their families Mm. so I have to ask now, because we're sitting here. What jobs have you done that were absolutely despisable, but you did it because of your principled approach to life and that you, you just have to get it done and stop bitching about it? I feel like that's every day of my life. 
<laughs> it's no, not that bad. Come I on, mean, it's right. not bad, but don't want to do half the shit I do. That's fair. Right? That's a fair statement. Yeah. Like, I sell lights. Fuck. No one fucking cares about lights. Right? But I do. I got to pay the bills. I got to mm. make money. Mm. Yes, fine. I'm, make, I'm saving the world by reducing energy consumption and helping businesses make more <laughs> money. But, like, in the greater scheme of things, fucking meaningless. Mm. You know? Does that... I'm 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 curious. Like I know I know you're not negative about it. Mm-mm, I think you communi- I think I know I know you long enough that I know that you communicate it as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Right? There's no ego negative or positive on either side. It just is what it is. And I and, and, and I wonder, is 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 that over a long period of time, is that a negative thing? Because one could say that you've conceded or given up. Not that I'm saying you have, but people can see that. What what is that line of personal responsibility and and getting the shit done that you know that you need to get done, but also challenging yourself and ex- expanding yourself and expressing yourself in the only way that you can. And so I, w- I wonder how you've been able to find that balance. So I think as a younger man, I felt as though my goal was I need to make money. I need to be able to find a way to provide long term, set up systems where I can work and be able to provide value for people around me, for my family, etc. Um, I think if I could do it all over again, I would not have gone that route, that road. Tell me more. How, what would you have done? I think I would have done something, something else that matters. Not that this didn't matter. It doesn't not matter. It's only in retrospect that you can create a qualification for it, right? Correct. It's not like you could create a qualification before you went into but it. But knowing yourself, your ability, what you're capable of, I could have applied that time, energy, and effort into something bigger. Tell it. Extrapolate on it. What, I, what, what could have that been? I, I don't know what that could have been. Because there has to be people that are going to listen to this mm-hmm. who are I, in your exact same position. See, I don't just 20 years, you know, behind us. I don't know if it's something exact um, because almost regretting it would be, I I don't like the idea of regret and I don't regret anything I've ever done. I'm with you on that. Um, However, knowing now what I know, I would have chosen a different path. Hmm. I think, I think many of us would be in that situation. Mm -hmm. What, 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 if you could bring tangibleness to that, what is, if you can conjure up a decision in the past, how would you have done it differently? How would that have moved you to a different trajectory? Is there Was there a fork in a road moment for you where you're just like, man, either or, baby? I don't think there was. Mm. I think it was you see an opportunity and you go for the opportunity. And you see an opportunity and you go for the opportunity. And when you're younger, you take every opportunity you can. Mm. You should. You should. Um, but there's this idea that you only have so many opportunities in life and you should capitalize on every opportunity you're given because you never know what's going to come again. Mm. Right. And that's what we're told always. Mm. You have only so many good ideas in your life or you have only so many opportunities, opportunity knocks only so many times. Mm. Um, and be ready for the opportunity because you need to take advantage, Mm. blah, blah, blah. The problem with that is that I think there's always an opportunity. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's, it's there's almost too many. Correct. It's option overload. It it is. Mm. And in trying to take ever in going after every opportunity presented, you lose the foresight and the ability to see a big picture. Mm. And as a young man, it's harder to see the big picture. Right. Because you can only see forward. You That's can't right. see backwards when mm. you're young. When you get older, you spend a lot of time looking backwards. <laughs> and all you do is see all the landmines you stepped in along yeah. the way. Mm. And you're like, fuck, maybe I would have done that differently. Mm. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. As entrepreneurs, uh, both of us, we've made more mistakes than most. Correct. And they've been more costly than most. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to make mistakes anyway, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some, but you're going to lose anyway, then... Why'd you go through that struggle for something that was meaningless mm-hmm. in the chase of 
a little bit more money. Do you think it's an issue of dabbling versus commitment? And I'll, I'll expound on that in a second because I know of, I can think of a couple young men that, that I, I know of right now who are, I've told them, stop fucking dabbling. Mm -hmm. Like they'll go into something for like a year and a half, two years, but that's like two, a year and a half, two years is just the time necessary to mm -hmm. figure out whether you're actually competent at it, whether you can actually make good money at it. And like at the one and a half, two year period, it's like, bro, if you stick in another year for extra income, mm -hmm. the reason why this I'm speaking about this with emotion is this guy's dabbled for a year and a half, two years and he fucking quits and he pivots. It's like, mm -hmm. bro, you just like, if you had just stuck in a little bit longer, you would have fully realized the potential of this. So and let me back up. Well, Did you dabble so, too much when you were younger? Well, I think it's difficult because when you look back, then you're like, all right, maybe I should have stuck it out longer. Mm -mm. But there are a lot of people out there who stick with something too long. Mm, that's true too. So how do you find that balance? And nobody actually ever knows, mm. right? You won't actually know if you're stuck in something too long until you're gone. But you'll never know if it would have worked out if you don't quit. <laughs> <laughs> it's this crazy cycle of a huge well, mind fuck. Well, you, yeah, you're kind of damned if you do. You're mm -hmm. damned if you don't. Mm -hmm. But only in hindsight or an objective third person like me who can look into this young man's life. He's like 28. And I'm just like, dude, you're 28. You've tried four things since you were mm -hmm. 20. Like, you've you've none of them have really stuck. They've mm -hmm. all gotten you to a level where if you just had stuck in a little bit more, and I think that's easy for someone like me to look over of, you know, the last eight years of his life and be like, dude, like you dabbled like a motherfucker and you're frustrated as hell. I can get it. You're not where you want to be financially. But at the same time, from my limited, ignorant perspective, you haven't stuck in enough mm. out of those three or four things that you've done over the last eight years to truly see whether that could have been the thing. But at the same time, what if he had stuck with the first one and it sucked? Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's damn if you do, damn if you don't. Yeah. I think why, um, I think the most important thing is conviction. Mm -hmm. Do you really believe what you're doing matters? Mm -hmm. And if it matters, then you're willing to stick out a little bit longer. And if you have the conviction, it'll always be worth it in that moment in time. Correct. But what we lack in this day and age is conviction. Bro. People That's have no conviction shit. in what they do. People just do because mm. without a reason for why. And I think if people, if men held stronger to their convictions, if their promises meant something in life, if their word meant something like it used to, mm. where if a man promised you something, you don't need a contract because they say, oh, they would, they would do it. That used to be a thing. Used to be a thing. It's now, it's no longer anymore. I'm one of the few who whenever someone throws an NDA at me, I'm like, oh, fucking signing an NDA. Mm. And they were like, why? It's like, because your idea is not that good. And frankly, who's going to execute on it? Yeah. Who's going to actually work that hard for this? It's not going to be me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have my own ideas. I don't want to work on your idea. So like when it, it's like, I think that's a good example of, of, of how I see this, you know, be a man of your word, be a man of integrity, uh, be a man of, of personal responsibility, you know, let your yes be your yes type of dude. Right. I don't need to sign no fucking NDA. So I think it's concerning these days where um, there's a, a total lack of ownership of like, I think it starts at the most basic thing like marriage. For example, how many times in a man's life do they make a vow in front of people <sighs> where you stand in front of God, you stand in front of your peers, your mm. friends, your family, family, and you make a promise that yeah. you're going to do something. Mm. People used to die over vows, mm. right? People used to, point. where people would say, I'm going to seek revenge against this family for wronging my family, and I'm going to give my life for it. And they spend their entire lives chasing a person. Yeah. It yeah. used to be a thing. Yeah, because they had honor. Now, your vow literally means nothing. Nothing. From a statistical standpoint, on that, I, on that example alone, marriage vows, 100%. I mean, I mean, yeah, sometimes marriage fucking sucks. Being married to your wife, it could be pretty fucking shitty. How, how, how deep are you now? I mean, I've been married 10 years. Oh, 14 years. Man. And some of those days <laughs> feels like 10 years on one day. Bro, say less. It's a thing. I know. But I've made a promise, not only to her, 
but in front of everyone I've ever known mm -hmm. that this is my responsibility, that I'm going to do it this way, that I'm going to protect. And who am I to just be like, oh, just kidding. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Then what does my word mean now? The only one time in my entire life I vowed, not just like promise, not just say, but like vowed. That's such a fucking strong word, vow. I vowed in front of people. And to, I mean, they're called your wedding vows. <laughs> yeah, right? I, I'm actually thinking about the depth of this word right now. It's such a strong it's word. a strong word. But yet, it means nothing. And if your vow means nothing, what does your word mean? Even less. Exactly. Mm. So it's sometimes it's so basic of like, yeah, being married, some days it's fucking easy. Some days it's really tough. Mm. Some days you just want to drive everyone off the, off the bridge together because <laughs> I can't take this shit, right? The calling of the void, man. Correct. Like you're driving in the, the calling of the void. It's like, just kill yourself. Yeah, I could just end this now and <laughs> yeah. I don't have to deal with this shit anymore, right? I had that shit the other day. I was driving back from North Carolina and the calling of the void was like, just wrap your car around the tree. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Why? It's like, no, seriously, just 120. No problem. Easy. <laughs> like, yeah. and, and people will argue that, well... It's more important because you're supposed to be happy. Mm -hmm. But happiness is such a fleeting feeling. Mm. It comes and it goes. Your happiness for what? Your second? For a minute? For a year? Like, what does that even mean? Mm. And what about your responsibility to the world and the, gener and the entire universe itself when you as a man have made a vow? You know, you really bring into a, in a global context to that word, which I haven't sat on that word since got married 14 years ago but uh it's true mm -hmm. you made a vow in front of essentially your witnesses you, you're literally well, they're literally called witnesses they're called witnesses but yes 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 and you vowed in front of your entire universe correct not you know th and that's what matters right you vowed in front of your world your people your universe that's all and I think I, I, where my mind is going right now, Matt, is I can completely agree with everything you said. I resonate with it. I'm 14 years deep in my marriage. Love my wife, but everything you said is absolutely true. There's, win, there's wins, there's, there's W's, there's L's on, on mm -hmm. both sides of the equation. But at the same time, there are men who have failed mm -hmm. in this area. And maybe even for me, using the word failure is terse and rough, but I'm going to stick on that because mm -hmm. you vowed. You failed the vow. Mm -hmm. So, what of these men? What I, we don't we we you don't you don't want to knock on them. No. Life is variable. Life is fucking hard. It's hard. You, you can't judge a man for what he is. But at the same time, there has to be some universal standards, hmm. right? And I think what you're discuss is discussing is you're extracting a universal standard that we have as men truly failed in this generation our vows mean our words no longer mean anything mm -hmm. and i think that is uh, that is a strong topic for for you to probably bring up for any conversation they have is what is the value of a vow today what's the value of your words today what's the value of your your responsibilities your commitment um because if because how you fa can fail like a marriage is an example of what we've been talking about is is truly is truly a model that that can create massive dysfunctions in that individual all the way down for everything. And we all make mistakes for sure. Um, if you make a vow and you fail, fuck, I'm sorry, that sucks, right? Doesn't mean you're a bad person. Shit, it happens. Mm. You can turn around and get your shit back together, so that you can earn the trust of the universe again where your word again means something, mm. but I don't think you're automatically given it because you vowed and you broke your vow to the entire universe. Your universe, yeah. Which is what matters even more because all the people in the world that don't matter to you, their opinions don't fucking matter. Mm -hmm. It's the people that you invited to, let me use this word, wasted their time eating your grub and drinking your beer at your celebration for your vows and you fucked it up. Mm-hmm. 
it's, it sounds so rough, but I think at the same time, I think this is these are the types of conversations that people aren't willing to talk about. No. Because this this is prickly, man. Because yeah. what are we saying? It's tough. Six, 60% of American men are divorced. Yeah. It's like, well, then we're basically we're saying all y'all motherfuckers failed. And, <laughs> and I also saw that 70% of all divorce are actually initiated by women. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not. In, in, yeah, in most cases, oh, it's not. We could go for. Oh, we could go deep on this. Mm-hmm. It's divorce is so unfair for the man. Yeah, it's like it's it's not even close to any type of equality that. And knowing how bad it is and how the system is stacked against men to be divorced, like why would you do it? Mm. There's very little. There's no incentive, incentive for it. Yeah, there's no incentive for it. Figure your shit out. Get your house back in order. You know, mm. and it sucks because some people are fucking miserable. Some women are terrible to live with. Terrible. <laughs> Not speaking from <laughs> right. Some women can be terrible. You know, and some men can be oh, terrible right. also. Of course, oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm curious because I I know your wife, and I'm just I know you have the newborn and mm-hmm. love seeing that. That's just awesome. What would you say would be if there's one piece of advice, because you're a decade deep in marriage and relationship, what would you what would you say if some if some young blood came up to you, Matt, and said, "Man, I think I found the one. I want to go into this." Well, if you had five minutes with that man, what would you say to him? Pretty simple. Your job as a man is to provide and protect, not bitch and whine. Get your shit together. Provide and protect. If you're if you provide. And you protect, there's very little imbalance in the household. If you do your job, your responsibility, things that you're supposed to do as a man, your house actually is going to be pretty livable. Even the worst times aren't going to be that bad. I completely agree. But if you fail in your responsibility, she's going to put it on you to man up and do what you promised. Mm. And if you feel that pressure and that gets to you and all of a sudden that becomes, I feel sad. Get your shit together because it sucks. Again, this this world is not for the weak. And it's not about like, oh, I'm going to beat everyone up and being strong. That's not the type of strong. The strong is dealing with the pressures of the world, dealing with the pressure of society, dealing with the pressure within your own household and doing your shit anyway. And that's not easy. But that's what men need to do. And that all is coming back to you, uh, your first point, which is essentially be a man of your fucking word. That's it. All right. You promised. You vowed. It's pretty hardcore. You're going to take. It's pretty hardcore, man. Like, I agree with, I agree with you. Like, if you do your job at home, which is, you, and I think you've espoused it really well here, provide and protect, then the house runs. Pretty smooth. The house runs. Mm Mm-hmm. There you know? may be good times. There may be bad times even within that. But it runs. But it's not the worst. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. Everything else seems dealable. I, want, I, I wonder, what has caused... Because you and I were born in a different time but than the current generation, obviously. But I'm just wondering what has caused this, this softness where when pressure comes... And these young bloods are feeling that pressure. What is what what has incentivized them to go inward and start bitching and complaining instead of just like turning around and being like, "Well, roll up my fucking sleeves." I, I don't like, think it was know? an intentional negative thing. I think it's a product of hardship. So previous generations had more hardship. Okay, and because they had hardship, they wanted their next generation have it easier they didn't want to have the struggle Mm. that they had it was honorable Mm. in why they created the situation but the problem is is that creating comfortable situations created weak men Mm. it was not intentional i don't think i don't think anyone was like i hope my my son ends up being a pussy i don't think anyone (laughs) actually thought that it was i struggled i had a hard time in life Mm. i want my son to to not have have more i I don't want him to struggle like i did but in doing so, it actually did a weird disservice. Yeah. So I don't know how to fix that because, again, I don't think it was done intentionally to make men weak. Mm-hmm. I think it's just a result of pr- 
progress. So would you say that, because I think we can, we could take this juncture point and say it's a, just a lack of exposure and education, mm -hmm. that there is a more mature way to deal with life, to deal with the hardships, well, I to think deal with the, the variables of life. I think the world self-corrects. And because of the amount of woe is me in the world, we'll have a generation that will say, woe is me is, it's not that cool. It's not fucking cool. And they're going to come gets to that realization quick. on their own. Mm. And naturally, they're going to start building up. And with the weak men in the world as we have today, we're going to run into hard times. So that was hard times. We'll generate a generation of harder, stronger men. Mm. So it's it's... It's a it, cycle. It's a cycle. So do you think... We're this, just in that weird part of it right now. Yeah, we're in like a funky... Do you think you, this podcast or this idea is kind of a res, your response I to what that, you're seeing? That's exactly what it is. Mm. You know, I think it's... I want people to hear stories of what people really went through so that they know that them feeling a certain way, it's not the end of the world. I hope that you bring on some amazing communicators and storytellers mm. because you and I, and just for just a quick example, you and I lived in a time when we didn't have cell phones, mm -hmm. when we didn't have media, no social media, when we had to go outside after school. Like Correct. our parents were like, be home before it's dark. That's all mm -hmm. we care about, right? Not even a time. Right, not even a time. Just before, and you know, we came home, fucking tree sap in our hair and fucking bruises and cuts and shit and didn't matter and... And so we, in, I, I think you and I have talked about this before, but in many cases, you and I are kind of the last generation who gets to see both sides. Mm -hmm. And I think the younger generations need to hear that mm. from your guests, be able to tell stories in the 80s and, you know, 70s, 80s and the mid 90s, uh, you know, even just 70s, 80s and 90s. Like those were, especially the 80s and the early 90s, like that was the transition period for us. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my gosh, there's we have a, a this thing called a beeper, you know, in 1997 or whatever it was, you know, and and I think a, a lot of our growing up experiences without technology is uh, maybe I'm going a little too far here, but I don't think I'm too directionally incorrect. I think our lack of technology actually created in us a personal responsibility that a, a lack of a crutch. Mm -hmm. To solve our problems back then, because like when we had issues back then, we had to fucking deal with it. Like, like you wanted to, if you wanted to date a girl, you had to get rejected to your fucking face. Mm -hmm. Like I remember, like I, I can conjure up right now the anxiety of asking, um, of asking. I'm gonna remember her name right now. Kyoko Minagishi in seventh grade, <laughs> and and wondering if she was gonna say yes. Mm. Like. That shit doesn't happen anymore. Mm. That's that, that's what forms a man. I think that's what forms your character, right? And to be able to have a disagreement with a friend and get punched in the face. Which we've had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like, you know, guys are so scared to get hit now, mm. which is crazy, mm. right? They're so used to communicating their um, unhappiness, displeasure via words. Type Key, keyboard trolls. Keyboard. Yeah, keyboard. You know, and they try to be witty in order to deflect anger. Mm -hmm. But it's odd. People aren't w not willing to deal with problems head on mm -hmm. because they're scared to. Mm -hmm. But if you get to hear stories of people that dealt with their problems head on, all of a sudden it feels like, hey, I can do it too. That, I think, is a powerful message from the guests that you bring on mm -hmm. is that you can highlight s strength and personal responsibility and, and all of the stuff that really makes a man, a man through their unique stories, through their unique experiences. That's cool. I like that. I think the I biggest dis disconnect with say the previous generation for me, at least was that um, my parents' generation used to tell us how to do things. They wouldn't show us. Mm -hmm. They told us what we're supposed to do. And there was a disconnect there. We didn't connect mm -hmm. with the previous generation as well. Because they were always telling us how things are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. They didn't tell the stories like they should have. So maybe it's our opportunity 
to do one better. Be the storytellers. Be the storytellers. Because young men listen. Mm. They like being a part of the story. To hear how something began, how it ended. And people are starting to see through all the bullshit. They watch it knowing it's fake. People wake it up. Yeah. It's, 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 it's almost... People know that steak isn't real. <laughs> it's just, yeah, there's, there's, it's, it's the, the scripting has been so codified that it's like, it's pretty obvious, mm. you know, it's a script, but it's so, such a big part now of our lives. The script is that we just assume it's correct and mm. we've absorbed that it's okay. Mm. And we've been normalized to it. Uh, that's the thing. We've normalized the weakness. Correct. And it's okay. It's okay to be weak. It's okay to be sad. And you know what? It is. But get your shit together. <laughs> That's the thing. You know? That's Matt's thing. We yeah. should have a segment, get your shit together. Get your shit together. That's it. You know? You can cry about it later after you get your shit done. You know? There's plenty of time to be sad after you finish what you're supposed to do. I know how you're going to raise your kids. Well, you have a daughter. daughter. So you're going to be light on her. You have a son. <laughs> I, my daughter, I want, to have, I want her to have a lot of nice things. Don't, so let me ask you this. So I have a daughter. You have a daughter. Mm -hmm. I have a son. Do you feel... I've had these thoughts. Mm -hmm. My daughter's 12. Like, are there any good... Are there going to be any good men? I think it's our responsibility to be good men so that when she meets a non-good man, she she's knows, like, this guy's a pussy. She knows what the model should be. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. women, girls marry their dads. Mm -hmm. So... You got to be the type of man that you you want your daughter to marry. I want my daughter to meet a guy that's a provider, that's a protector. I want her to work if she chooses to work, mm -hmm. not because she has to work. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be her job. I agree. Her job should be able to raise a family if she so choose to do so. If she wants to pursue something of passion, um, of embetterment of the world, that should be her prerogative. And unfortunately, for the men out there, it's your job to figure the rest out. And support that shit all the way through. Exactly. And if you can't support that, meet your, a guy that can. Your shit together. Get your shit together. Because you're not meeting my daughter. No, mm -hmm. you're, you're not wrong. I mean, like, I think, man, we could dive into this. But I think, I wonder if it's worth, I wonder if, are you going to get in, Are you? so you're going to do... You're going to do interviews, obviously. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you're going to do like edutainment. Like, because for, no. I'll, give you, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot about personal responsibility here. Mm -hmm. We've talked about vows, which has really resonated with me during mm -hmm. this conversation. Like, that resonated, the, the word vow resonated so much with me, Matt, that when I think edutainment, it's like, do we need, do you, we, whoever, does there need to be a segment where it's just like, this is what your fucking word means. Like, mm. like this is what a vow is, mm. motherfucker. Because, like, you think it's all the, the you know, the, the, the flashbang, it's all the band and all the hype, go, you know, the ceremony, the wedding and all the fun, the food, the booze, right? But, like, listen here, motherfucker. Like, actually, that's all just the fanfare, the peripheral. The real juju is you standing up there in front of your universe and saying a vow. Like, what does that actually mean? So when I say edutainment, I'm like, educate people but be entertaining at the same time because I think there are some basic fundamental things that just we talk about it because mm. you and I understand it. Mm -hmm. But we haven't actually explained what that fucking means. I you don't know? want to tell anyone how to think or how to live their life. I'm just sharing what I believe, and I think it comes off best when we talk about it in conversation. Fair enough. If I'm telling you this is what it's supposed to mean mm -hmm. and this is what how you're supposed to perceive it, now I feel like I'm talking at somebody and I don't want to I don't want it to come off that way. Fair because enough. I'm not. You do what the fuck you want to do. I don't give a fuck what you do with your life mm -hmm. at all. This is how I live my life. Mm -hmm. And this is how I perceive life. Mm -hmm. And if that provides value to you, awesome. If not, tell me to kick rocks. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> right? Cuz I'm allowed to believe whatever I want exactly. to believe. And you're allowed to believe whatever the fuck you want to believe. And whoever you want to be, you can be. Whoever I want to be, I'll be. So it's more of a decision of the theme that you don't want to get into the defining so much. Uh, I don't I get that. I, I don't that. want people to feel like I'm trying to educate them. Mm. I don't want people to feel like I'm trying to tell people what to think. Because mm. I'm not. Think for yourself. This is how I think. Mm. You don't have to agree with me. Or you can. 
up to you. Don't give a fuck. But yes, you're just the guy willing to take, you're the guy willing to be assertive and share it. Correct. Which is frankly in today's day and age courageous enough. I believe what I believe. I have conviction in what I believe. And if you can see value in what I believe, come you know on on. Come know, on board. No problem. You know what's fucked up, fucked up about what you just said, though, Matt? Is what you just said is actually brave. Which is crazy. It's crazy, fuck. right? <laughs> be whoever the fuck you want to be. Who cares? Like we, You Don't and I heard that shit back do. in the 90s when we were growing up. And we were like, of course, you be whoever you want to be. But now, for someone to say that 20 years, two decades later, it's like, whoa, whoa you better... Yeah. Not don't say the silent part out loud. It's like yeah. wait, wait, wait. No. In the nineties, there everyone was telling us we could be whatever we wanted to be. Be whatever you want to be. Yeah. And do be you who you? Yeah. yeah. And if you if that means you're gonna be a um an agent of the matrix, but that's what you want, fuck, good for you. I have no problem with that. Own it. Mm. Don't be shy. Be and like, actually uh, do it well. Yeah. Like be no the woman in the red dress. No problem with that <laughs> at all. You know? I think people have the ability to choose their life and you should be able to do it and show some fucking kahunas and choosing why you choose what you've chose. Mm, I like that. I think what one of the things that I'm looking forward to hearing from your guests are the reasons why. Mm. Tell me why you made that decision. Tell me why you went down this career path. Tell me why you, why you did that in that moment because I would have done it differently. Mm-hmm. That is... The why is important because I think so many, wow, that's juicy. So many men today don't have a why. Mm. They just copy shit. They just do shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, this is, this, is the, this is the way that you do Twitter. This is the way that you do YouTube. You and I have had these conversations mm-hmm. over years. This is the way that you do TikTok. It's like, well, why don't you just fucking be original? Why don't mm-hmm. we do that? I think this podcast is going to be a great example, a living example, almost personified example of your lifestyle and your model in this production. That's all it is. This is who That's I am. That's fucking cool. This actually. is what I am. That's this is what I do. Shit. I don't give a fuck, bro. You know? I'm good. Awesome. That was good, man. Thank you, buddy.